I'm Lisa Birnbach for Houdini.com. If you're planning a wedding, you're probably also planning a menu, no matter what time of day you get married. There are some new trends to get you off the chicken or beef circuit, and here to discuss the latest in weddings and food is Carly Roney, editor-in-chief of TheKnot.com, whose new book is The Knot Book of Wedding Lists. Hi, Carly. Hello. So, chicken or beef, what will you have? What's fun in wedding world is that people are kind of busting out. There's comfort food is a hot trend in weddings. Like, why have chicken and beef when you can have mac and cheese and, you know, hamburgers and fun different things. Even ethnic cuisine is fun at weddings. These people are having big Italian feasts or, or Indian feasts to really add some flair and personality to their wedding day. You know, when it comes to food, the reality is no one really remembers much of it, you know, 20 minutes after the wedding is over. Right. Like, we stress about it so much. I mean, honestly, they want to know, is there an open bar? <laughs> And was there enough food for me to eat? Well, what couples are doing these days, one of the new trends is to do food stations. So they don't want people seated at their tables the whole time. They want people up and dancing and mingling. So they would have great different stations around the room. So you can go up to the sushi bar and you can get sushi. And so it's you have to work with your caterer. This is their job. And I always tell people on the Not.com, like, trust these event professionals, like this is what they do for a living, say to them, I really want, could you just incorporate it in some way? And they'll work with you and come back. They want the meal to be special as well, and they want to work inside your budget. Obviously, if you go to a restaurant, you're wedded to the, their chef and their cuisine. But are there places where you can bring in your own caterer? One of the first spaces? questions you need to ask when looking for your reception site is, is an in-house caterer, can I bring in anything, and or do you have required caterers that you um, would need us to use? Like some, some mansions only have the three caterers they like to work with because right. they know their rules and things like that. Browse their menus online, you know, get a sense of what, what sites they might work with, and it's really a lot easier these days. But clearly you have to go in and taste the food. You're not going to well, book Well, that was anyone, my next but. question. Is it appropriate? Can you say I'd like to try it before the wedding? You will always have a tasting with your catering, um, even if you're in a hotel and you can only book with them because they want to find out, they want to make sure you've, you're pleased with what's going to be served on that day. So they will, um, you know, they're not going to let you taste every single option on their menu, but you will work out with them a tasting menu. Like these are the types of things I'd like to taste this in an alternative to that. What about this? And they would give you sort of the three different appetizers. And so you, you do get to taste and make your final choices from there. And if you want to go the, I don't have any options route, you'd still probably want to have a vegetarian option in the background that only your servers know about, but they can say, oh, someone says, wait, I'm vegetarian. You can serve it. But otherwise what you're going to want to do is like a surf and turf. Now, is it appropriate to uh, write out the menu? Do you like that? Do you recommend at thenot.com that the menu card be offered at every place setting? You don't need to have one at every place setting. You could just have them on two places on the table. That's a, a way to save money as well. Everyone doesn't need their own personalized menu. But uh, it's nice for people to know what's ahead, too. You know, should I really eat all of this? Are there five more courses? Are there only two more? They can I hate pace this themselves yes, this way. They can pace right. themselves. Now, speaking of saving money, and I heard you say it, mm -hmm. uh, what are other ways that you can have an elegant wedding reception and serve people enough food to be happy, enough alcohol to be happy, but save a little money? One of the best tips we have is, you know, don't get too attached to the five course menu. You know, you can have three wonderful courses. You don't have to have a soup and a salad. Like, pick one, have a, a lovely entree, and then, you know, get out and have, you know, you don't, also don't have to have dessert and a cake. Like, just serve your cake. The question is, like, people just want to have enough to eat. They don't want to feel like they have to wait too long to eat. That's the biggest complaint, actually. If you can supply your own alcohol and wine, are you going to save money? Yes, you're going to save some money, but honestly, you're only going to save, mostly will save money like if you're in a restaurant, a hotel or restaurant environment. If you're working with an off-site caterer in another location, they're probably going to get you a pretty significant deal on that alcohol anyway. Um, the best way to save money on alcohol is to limit your bar. Like you don't have to have every single type of liquor because A, you get charged for every bottle of liquor that's opened. Try to be limiting, but don't, please, God forbid, and I really don't have a cash bar. It's better to have, honestly, no alcohol at all. Thank you, Carly, <laughs> for Houdini.com. I'm Lisa Birnbach.